This video helps you get started with nuclear emulsification. At the outset, it's very important that we understand how to set up the machine. Second, understand what are the power vacuum and flow settings in your particular console. It's important that you have the engineer at hand for your first few cases who will help you fine tune and will also help the staff fine tune the understanding of the machine setup and what are the best power modulation, flow and vacuum settings that you require based on the technique that you would choose for your different cases. When I say different cases, I mean the cataracts of the different grades of density. So once you've understood the setup of the machine, second, you've understood the console and the power modulation that you are going to use, then we move to understanding the foot pedal. So let's get started. At the outset, the main power button is turned on to turn on the FIGO machine. This brings the display on. We now move to setting up of the tubings of the machine. Let's start with the setup of the tubings. Mr. Gandhi, over to you. This is a uh, safety one connection. Uh, first, we have to connect the safety one connection and put it and it will turn and this is the L of a tube and put in the pump and you turn and put it in the other side and it is goes to the outlet the other tube and just close the pump okay lock like this this is the irrigation pinch tube it goes to the irrigation pinch wall and this is the reflex tubing, it goes to the reflex valve. This is the IV. Yes, this is the IV connection. The tubing connection is completed. We now move to the other end of the tubing. The white tubing with a wider board is the irrigation tubing. And the green tubing, which is a narrower bore, is the aspiration tubing. So the assistant now disassociates the irrigation and the aspiration tubings and connects it to the corresponding points on the handpiece. So the irrigation, which goes on to its socket on the right, and the aspiration into the middle socket. One has to confirm that it is nice and firmly attached. Having done this, the OT assistant now takes the connector of the FECO handpiece and connects it in the correct socket. Once this is done, the FECO machine is primed. Once the priming is complete, your settings show up as the engineer has filled it up in the console. At the end of the priming procedure, the settings are ready for your surgery. I believe that it is extremely important for all novice FACO surgeons who are getting started with FACO emulsification to even before they actually over the handpiece and start sculpting in their first ever case, they need to be extremely familiar with the foot pedal of the machine that they are likely to use. So not only as to how far out or in the foot pedal needs to be placed, to maintain the correct angle of the knee to give a comfortable positioning. To start with, uh, the exact position of the foot pedal should be known. We have understood now that we need the correct angle which has to be more than 90 degrees at the knee to allow for a smooth dorsiflexion and plantiflexion movement of the foot. Moving on to the foot pedal itself, we need to understand what should be the quantum of movement 
to go from foot pedal zero, which is nothing, to foot pedal one, which is the start of the irrigation, then to foot pedal two, which is aspiration, and then to foot pedal three, which is FACO. So start to understand what are the auditory signals on your particular machine. Let's see this particular machine. So with this particular foot pedal, this is what the sound sounds like. Right now I'm in position zero, which means nothing is happening. I depress a bit till I start the irrigation. In this particular machine, the irrigation sound is the B. So familiarize your foot depression. What is required to give you foot pedal one irrigation? Further depression gives you aspiration and gives you this sound, that continuous buzzing sound of aspiration. Finally, further depression goes into foot pedal 3 or FACO. From 3, learn to move to 2, back to 3, back to 2, come back to 1 and 0. So this movement has to be understood and learned by every surgeon perfectly before they even get started with their surgeries. The next thing that you need to understand is what are all the other uh, knobs on the foot pedal for. So for in this particular machine, when I press the top left knob, I go to the next mode, the next mode, and the next mode. If I've overshot and gone ahead some more, I go back. If ever I wish for any continuous irrigation, a mode I don't usually choose, then that's how you can get continuous irrigation on and off. And I think the most important foot pedal control that we all need to know is which is the reflux on our particular machines. Because in case accidentally your hand piece, the tip, you end up holding on to either the PC or the iris and you need to reflux it, you need to know which is the reflux machine and you've got to know it so that spontaneously you'll go ahead and press which in this case, this button to get into the reflux mode and then get back. The next thing that a surgeon actually needs to be familiar with is for his particular case, what is the grade of the cataract and what are the settings on his particular console that he wants to work with. Now this case is a case of a grade 2 nucleosclerosis and this is our soft setting under my name. So I'm working with a power of 20 which is linear which means as I press the foot pedal from the start of foot pedal 3 all the way to the bottom, I will in a linear fashion give the energy from 0 to 20 which is the maximum preset. The vacuum in this particular case because I do a direct chop is non-linear and 300 millimeters of mercury which is as soon as I start in foot pedal 3 the depression I am going to give the full 300 millimeters of mercury vacuum and finally the flow rate that is the rate at which things happen in the eye is again set at a non-linear 30 which means at the onset of foot pedal 3 all the way down Throughout FACO, I'm giving a fixed flow rate of 30. And with respect to power modulation, I have chosen the occlusion micro pulse mode, which has got a count of 40 and an on time of 6, which means it stays in pulse mode while I am in FACO. And upon occlusion, it gives me micro pulses to further fine tune and reduce the power energy delivery into my eye. Continuous irrigation is off, and I'm on US2, ready to do the FACO, ready for whichever step I need to do FACO in. And then again, the next thing to be checked even before starting your surgery itself is the handpiece. So the assistant hands you the handpiece. You have to confirm the tightness of the irrigation and the aspiration tubing. You've got to check the tip. You've got to check the orientation of the tip. You got to check the orientation of both the holes with the tip. You've got to make sure that the sleeve is screwed on behind as far back as you require. And finally, under direct visualization of the microscope, one observes the tip that it is optimal. It's not too old or blunt. And one then fine tunes the position of the sleeve. 
which is how much of the tip needs to be exposed in a bevel up position, what is the orientation of both the holes on the sleeve with the tip, and finally confirm the patency of the entire system. And before you then get started, ensure that your second instrument that you want for the particular case, this is a chopper that I'll be using for the chop, as well as the Sinsky hook, which I'll be using for the rest of the surgery, are exactly as what I desired. Because you do not want to, in the middle of your surgery, be fumbling around that the tip isn't OK. Once this checklist is taken care of, you're good to start your case and learn phaco emulsification. Let us understand how to handle the handpiece. So the handpiece is held in the hand like a pen, firmly and steadily. The tubings are always kept a little slack to avoid any unnecessary kinking of the tubing during the procedure. And finally, the way in which the hand rests. If you're a surgeon sitting superiorly, now I'm left-handed and I, may, I, I work through an incision at 65. My hand is folded over like this and placed on the patient's brow. This gives me that extra support to actually stabilize my hand, the handpiece, during nuclear emulsification. Now, this advantage is usually not there for a surgeon sitting temporarily. When you're sitting temporarily, it's just this little support that you have, which is not much, and then the surgeon performs phaco emulsification because there's no corresponding brow on the temporal aspect to give you that additional support. So also, if the second side port incision were made too far away from your main incision, that again is a very awkward way in which to operate. So this comfortable distance between your main incision for the probe and the side port incision for the second instrument should be roughly 90 degrees. So if the surgeon is sitting slightly more temporally, so also the second incision changes. So keep this gap irrespective of where you're placing your main incision. Keep this angle between the two incisions during phaco emulsification for aiding the ease of the nuclear emulsification procedure.